In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, filled it with all sorts of trees and livestock to provide a conducive environment for man to live in and commune with him. That experience is lost on many across the globe, but in the heart of the eastern region of Ghana, specifically in Mamfi Kuyapim, that Eden experience has been brought back to life. Welcome to Mount Horeb Prayer Center, the prayer wing of Mount Horeb Victorious Church International. At Mount Horeb Prayer Center, the break of dawn is a renewal of faith in God as man connects with nature, with birds chirping, sheep bleating, trees swinging in the direction of the wind, and the sun gently rising above the horizon to usher in a new day. Mount Horeb Prayer Center has been a solution center to many in Ghana and beyond, as many have testified and continue to testify about encountering God's divine power through prayers offered at the center. The work of the Prophet commences early in the morning as hundreds throng his residence for consultation and deliverance from various oppressions of the devil. But how did the vision come about? Founder and General Overseer, Prophet Paul Kwekuniokai, tells the journey. Uh, the Lord sent me here uh, on 23rd June 1993 and it is a ministry of uh, precise healing and deliverance. I'm an ex-banker. But the Lord said, no, this is what I want you to do. You see, the, the devil has taken over the lives of many people. So it's like without any strong and powerful deliverance, man of God, uh, people will perish. Let me take you a bit back. I mean, yeah. in 1993, yeah. when you had to make that journey, yeah. I'm not sure it was a, a very easy one for you to make. <laughs> because you were a banker. Yes. And you left banking to obey the voice of God. I'm not sure it was easy. Sure. Very, very, very difficult. And then I, 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 I was hoping that uh, I would get some support immediately. But it didn't come. I had to go through a lot of things. Initially, I had to sleep on the hand branches because. I had wanted to rent a place in town and then get a school to start the ministry. As ministry grows and money comes in, as a banker, this, this was my thoughts. Right. But unfortunately, God says, no, you are sleeping on the land. You are not going anywhere. No, so God told you the land you should go to. Yes. He, wow. he, 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 in fact, in the, in, in the vision of the night, he revealed it to me. Right. And then, before then, I had an encounter with three angels who came and mentioned my name was I was waiting on the Lord uh, physically they called my name in fact when you look at my name there is one name uh, Kweku. Kweku is on my uh, birth certificate but I, I had never used it before but um, in, in the encounter with the angel of the Lord he mentioned Kweku me Kwekuni. So uh, right now, Kwekuni has become very popular right. than Paul Ni Okai. Uh -huh. So the angel of the Lord told me that, look, we are sending you to Mount Ekwapim to start the ministry. And that's how I was waiting on God at uh, a Pentecost prayer camp at Okanta, or also called Apos. And so I had that encounter. And they said I should come out from the room. They want to talk to me. So I came out from the room. And immediately, they saw, I saw them. I fell under the anointing because the, the, the kind of fire surrounding them was too much. Mm -hmm. So I fell under the anointing. And uh, whilst I was on the floor, I was still seeing them in my eyes. Yes. And then the one in the middle addressed me and said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm sending you to Manfred Ekwapi and throughout the world and go out all over the world to preach the gospel, heal the sick and deliver them. So that was the, the whole thing. Then after a while, they said, we are taking the lead to Manfred Ekwapi. See how the place looks like. So I saw the place, the land and everything in like a, a day vision like that. Whilst I was in trance when they were talking to me. So 
when I got up, I had a fair view of the area. Right. So I, I began to interview people about Man Fair Papin. Unfortunately for me, the first person I interviewed spoke negatively. He said, then you didn't hear from God. The place is too much of evil doers and witches and wizards. I said, oh, so God, you are sending me to this place. That if uh, with the word of God, I know that with God, all things are possible. So I have to uh, take that step to come. So by his grace, I came. And before I came, I had no money for transportation. So I prayed and the Lord uh, directed me to someone who, who I've met before okay. at the prayer place. And then I went to the man and the man uh, gave me some very little money and warned me never to come to him again for money. And by that day, I wept. First Lady of Mount Horeb, Reverend Mrs. Elizabeth Okai has been one of the pillars of this great ministry, lending credence to the saying that behind every successful man is a prayerful, hardworking, resilient woman. She tells her horror story and how she moved from the comfort of Ghana's capital to join her husband, the prophet, in the bush. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get here early. Okay. It was late. Even before, he told me that I cannot locate where he was in the bush. <laughs> so I should go to the landowners in town wow. and someone will bring me. Yeah. And I have to join them. So when we were coming, we fought just a footpath and I wasn't fortunate. It rained that day. Oh. I remember by was a Tuesday. Okay. So I have to step in into some holes oh. and some logs and stones. But finally we got to the place. So what was going through your head, your mind at that time? Like right, moving from Accra, coming up to this place, very obscure. <laughs> Are we going? <laughs> so what has in the man? So how would you go to the place? Say no. Hey, so this thick forest, my husband is saying uh, this thick forest. He said, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. Hey, just look around, look around. I was I was a lot afraid. <laughs> Coming here. Uh, because I walked through the rain, I was feeling cold, yeah. I was shivering, no electricity. So what he did was he just uh, what is it? prepare fire in a charcoal, light up some lanterns and put it in your room like a pottery fire. <laughs> <laughs> and that was supposed to keep you warm. Wow. With the encounter that I had with the angels, it gave me a very high faith, great faith in me that this journey is not a simple journey. It is it's a spiritual journey that God himself is involved. Because I interpreted the three angels as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So I know I am secured. Now, um, my thoughts was that how do I get in touch with the owners of the land and then move on to start ministry? And so I, I followed the direction and I was in the spirit. Because I, I, I had then fasted for 40 days, okay. uh, taking only water for 40 days. And so I came out, uh, when I dropped out of the vehicle, I, I was just led by the Spirit from the main uh, junction there to the land. So when I came downstairs, I saw a stream and it's like, taste the water. I tasted the water and it was a very good drinking water. And I said, wow, this land is a blessed land. Mount Horror Prayer Center is blessed with tons of unique features which draw men from all walks of life to the mountains of Mamfi Ekiapim to seek the face of God. One of such unique features is the stream, Koko Asinsu, which runs through the prayer center. Koko Asinsu because it is surrounded by Koko trees. This serves as a conducive area for personal supplications and an encounter with God. Testimonies have been told of how this stream has served a lot of healing purposes. A retired teacher, Elder Norte, who has been cleaning the stream for over two decades, tells us more about this special water. Uh, no, uh, uh, 
ya man from them ya ni e chon bi e ke ya di duwa ni spe ni ni yo special ni yo e ji eh boni bo o he mo ke li yo li yo bi no e chon ni chon ya ke ni meke eh inte hospital the doctor ke wa ke shin le ko ma hin ahe la ni bi Come <laughs> Make <laughs> <laughs> Jenny or me, but Jenny or me. If we were one, Cocodini, me, a member of the new name. It's a new G. Kunikamuku by the machine, your new. The doctors can miss it by the paramedical officers by the Lupa, Babin, Hamban, and your new. Then walk up, Nina, who a minchena, and Nibudenche, who your new, and one then a knuckle. Morning on him, but only can be by a yeah <laughs> Eh, to boni mille e bi ene ene ni nte do duwa hun ni yaye eh eh ni so lo se no do ni tawo ni de ba se so now how do i acquire the land and uh, the voice of the holy spirit spoke to me and said look go uh, to the uh, your left side there was a footpath so i followed the footpath and then i saw a house and at the back of the house there was this old man very fair colored man who was in his small garden. So I asked him the owners of the land. And then he told me that, oh, the land that you are asking of belongs to Mami Yameni. But she, she is dead. But the children are in town. So you can uh, go to them. So I was asking him if he can get someone to direct So you can go yourself. I said, wow. But you are new to the town. Yeah, I'm new to the town. <laughs> Maybe he didn't know. Yeah. I met one lady, and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit said, ask her about Mami Amenu's uh, house. So I said, oh, uh, lady, can you direct me to uh, Mami Amenu's house? So I'm the granddaughter. Wow. <laughs> he said, I'm the granddaughter. I said, wow. I said, oh. and then she added, all the elders and those who matter in the house are all settled in the house having a meeting. I said, hey, Jesus. What's a coincidence? What's a coincidence? <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Right. So when I she took me there and I entered, there was a big gathering in the house. And their the elder or elders or chief was seated in there, and many people started seated around him. Right. The women are at one side, the men at another side, and then they welcomed me and they said, You are welcome. Who are you? I said, oh, I am uh, New Okain. Uh, and then where are you coming from? I said, from Okanta Prayer Camp. He said, oh, we know the prophet there. The prophet there married uh, Mami Yamenu's uh, daughter. 
I said, hey, how are things just working are together? Things just working all of a sudden like this? Anyway, so uh, I told them my mission. And they said, well, the land there, uh, Mami Yamenu had a revelation uh, before, three months before she died, that she should warn the family not to sell that land. And that a man of God will be coming to occupy the land to start a great ministry. And then three days before she died, she had another revelation that some uh, angels came and carried her to the land. And they, they, they told her that, look at this picture. They showed everything that we are seeing presently on Mantore to her. That look at the buildings, look at the people, look at the church, look at this. You don't have to sell this land. Tell them this land is for God. So that was how the whole thing uh, came about. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, part of the people uh, met who met in the house, the family, they agreed that, okay, they will give the land to me, but on the basis of uh, leasing. Okay. I said, oh, the, 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 the picture that God has shown to me is not a matter of uh, uh, leasing. It should not be outright sale. There was some argument over there. But initially, it was a lease. Right. And then God moved in a miraculous way that they themselves came uh, and then they told me, look, we want to give it as an outright sale. Right. So I, I started. Mm. And then they asked me, at that time, I didn't have money. Yeah. So they asked me, so how do you pay for the land? Mm -hmm. Because of uh, it's being sold to you. I said, well, I have some elders who will be some big people. They will come and they will pay. <laughs> so I know, but how means God is going to provide. Right. He's the provider. And so it came to pass that when I started ministry to uh, people started coming and I was able to pay for the land. Meanwhile, the first three days, I slept in the open because I did, uh, God said, stay here, do everything here. Don't go to the town. When you go there, they will, be, they will pollute you and it will create a whole lot of problems. So I stayed. Then on the third day, after the fire, the, the, the lights had left, the, had left, then I started singing. I had some joy in my heart. So I started singing. So I was singing. As I was singing, then all of a sudden, I saw a guy coming, trying to pay. It was a forest. So tried to pay the way to enter where I was. Mm -hmm. And then the guy uh, saw that I was a little afraid. Yeah. So he threw the cutlass and then was walking to me. And then when he got to me, he said, look, I have an okra farm at the top there. And tips have been worrying me. So every time I had to go to the uh, farm to watch over. So he sleeps in, on the farm. Oh, okay. And so he said, look, uh, whilst I, I was there, I heard someone singing. And then the voice came to me there. And the voice said, the man who is singing can heal your father right now who is bedridden. So go to the man and take him to heal your father. So we went to the house. The man was bedridden, have a protruded stomach and smelling. And the guy has already prepared a casket. So the casket was in the same room the man was sleeping. And so... Um, the Holy Spirit led me and I prayed for them. I started vomiting blood and he vomited uh, uh, some blood and after that he said he wanted to take uh, some drink or tea and so the guy quickly prepared for him and then he got up. Just like that? Just like that. So it was a compound house. So the people in the house all were, uh, saw the old man now walking. Mm -hmm. and has, has been, he's been bedridden. He's been bedridden for two years. Then they said, hey, we did an anonymous amount for now. What I said, obey, obey, yet, obey, sign, you are real. And they spread the news that there is a man who can heal, who can deliver, who can do this and that. And then people started coming. And the news went out and out and out. And this has brought Matorev to where we are. So I have that kind of faith in me that no weapon. So when you see all my labels yeah, have written no weapon. no weapon no weapon because i know where i'm coming from right. and that has sustained me till now
Yes. So when we came here, I mean, we've been around, we've seen a lot of things happen here. And it's it's a far cry from what used to be the case 29 years ago. Yes. And we saw a certain room. We were told that was your, 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 your second dwelling. Wonderful. <laughs> At one point, uh, my wife wanted to join me here right. and the kids. So they need a place to sleep. Even though she was a teacher at that time, mm -hmm. and she had an appointment with the uh, Okapman Secondary School. Okay. So uh, we thought uh, she may have a bungalow there and settle there with the kids, mm -hmm. while I remained in the bush. <laughs> well, unfortunately for them, for her, she couldn't have that kind of privilege. Okay. So it happened that quickly I have to uh, build a house. I didn't have money to build a house. So <laughs> there was this guy who came in, he was sick and he had his uh, healing. So he said, oh, Papa, we can use mud to build a house. So we started building. So it's a mud house that we built. Oh, and yeah, you see how short it is, <laughs> like my, my height. <laughs> you put this according to your height. Yes, I put it according to my height. My wife do is not tall, okay. so we are all short. <laughs> <laughs> so that was what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, uh, we occupied that two single rooms mm. for seven years. It was after seven years before uh, people were coming to support us gradually. Right. And we started, you know, constructing uh, good uh, accommodations for our own and then for people who want to wait on God for some time. Mount Her Prayer Center also houses numerous accommodation facilities for guests who come to stay for days to seek the face of God in this tried and tested spirit-filled land of answered prayers. The prayer center, under the leadership of Prophet Paul Kweku Niokai, is also expanding its pastor's accommodation facility to ensure that pastors have a conducive place to live away from the disruptions of the ever-busy city to focus on their God-given mandates. And we've seen also that, I mean, aside the prayer center, the church and all of that, we see a Bible school and more importantly, a sanitarium. Yes. What led to that? Good. Uh, at one point uh, during the early stages, I was there one day when they brought a mentally sick person. I had never prayed for any mentally sick person before. But all of a sudden, the Lord said, touch the heart. So I did that for about two minutes. The, the sickness in the head disappeared and it became normal. And then another person too was brought and it was also the same. I touched the heart and immediately the mind responded and it was okay. I said, hey, what's happening? So it continued and continued and uh, now we have the sanatorium where we have about 115 mentally sick people. Wow. Yes. One time, uh, uh, President uh, Atamos visited here. I, I was led by the Spirit to ask that if there is any mentally sick person in, in this crowd, it was a Sunday service, who had had a, a, his healing or her healing here to come for. We had 50 people coming round. And then the president said, hey, this is a very good work you are doing here. So we will help you uh, to pass the mental health bill. And unfortunately, the president passed on. And so that activity couldn't continue. Yes. And people bring the awards here. We ask them to give a little uh, fee for, the, uh, for feeding them. But it's, very, it's not sufficient and always uh, it creates a financial hardship for us. Uh, so as it stands now, the church solely handedly so, takes yeah, care of we the take, uh, Yes, yes. Oh, wow. We, we only take uh, some very few series from uh, the, their, their uh, guardians, right. but it doesn't work properly. Clearly, the facility for mentally challenged persons is one of the most iconic features of this prayer center. One of the secrets of the success of this facility is the commitment and dedication of the caretakers. Here, these men have spent years serving God and mankind with their time, energy and experience.
It is worthy of note that these men have been here for at least 16 years. But the journey for them has not always been rosy. It happens, especially when we are addicted. Yes, mental people here almost said that we difficult. Almost problem one, almost difficult, difficult here. See, they are they do not panic. Bafu for me, they are very aggressive. We call them a big crowd. Only they are very tough. But apart from that, said it me handle. I charge you be one week. Or be bad. I no go on so. So after even when you cast out the demon from him or her physically, physically, uh, yes. you also be having problems. Right. So we combine both okay. uh, for the person to receive me. And we have been having uh, many visitors from Europe and America, uh, doctors coming here. They, they use this place as their point of uh, research, okay. uh -huh, their center for research. And they interview our uh, in, uh, people, how they receive their healing, what went on and on and so on. Yeah. But do you have any partnerships with any agency here in Ghana? For instance, the hospital, the psychiatric hospital? Do you do yes, we, we have that uh, kind of coordination with uh, the psychiatric hospitals. Uh, at times, they, they refer some of their uh, people to us here. Uh, they refer them to us. Uh, and they tell us that, look, we have been uh, helping them, giving them medicine, but to no avail. So can you help? But before they realize the person receives healing from here, they are this center. So at one, I remember one point, uh, at one time, they, they wrote a letter to me that uh, doctors from the Marine Hospital in Holland are visiting Ghana 
to learn at first and how mentally sick people are healed. And so they have realized that um, all the patients they refer to as receive their healing. So they want me to brief the doctors how we do this <laughs> uh, And it was very amazing because uh, what we are doing in medicine, there is a big uh, gap. Uh -huh. Because we pray for the people, we don't give any substance to them, any medication to them. But we pray for them and they receive their healing. So that's how it happens. Yeah. area and they need to support us because when you when the you could see the accommodation it's not the best uh -huh. so we need uh, an accommodation that will uh, give them that kind of standard a better place to uh, live that's what we want from the government just give us the accommodation good accommodation for the people who are mentally sick and then the rest we can also help. At times we need food for them, and these people they eat more than normal human beings. When when they are in uh, recovery, and then they start eating, they eat. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and now food by It's serious. It's serious. Yeah. So that intervention would help. It will help. Yeah. yeah. It will help. Yes. It will help. And when we when we even have some organizations who want to donate. I think it will help. Unlike most religious organizations which revolve solely around the leader, Mount Horeb has a structured organogram for effective running of all branches of the church, including the prayer center. As, as an institution, we actually have a national executive council which is made up of the general secretary, the general overseer, and some other senior uh, pastors or men and women of God. We also have the pastoral board, which primarily is more centered on behavior of pastors and general welfare related issues. We are more of a Pentecostal church, and, and Pentecostalism is more fire, fire power. You know, but that does not also take away the fact that we need to stay within ethical boundaries. You know, um, Christ Himself was a disciplined person when He came in the form of man. So, in his ways, he didn't just do things anyhow. He still went according to the protocol at the time. It was, it was in one or two instances where he, he had to teach them that you have to even know when you have to do, the, do what is due the system and what is due God. So yes, Christ himself operated with wisdom. So the expectation is that by the time you come out of our Bible school, you should possess some level of understanding and appreciation of these things and as long as you still engage the Holy Spirit, you should be fine. So I'm told, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have 30 branches in Ghana, yes. one in the UK. Yes. You coordinate all of these churches? Yes, we do. We do. Some, In fact, our, our churches, our strategy 
um, it's not like a strategy, it's more of a mandate. Right. So in, in the things of God, usually I, I, I also have this, I tell everything the secular world has, we have it. It's just that we choose to use different names. So yes, um, some will say strategy, some will say vision mission, but basically in every church there's a mandate. So through your mandate, you also develop how you operate. What we as a ministry concentrate on is usually not, uh, you know, for want of a better word, it's not the finest of, 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 of church growth. We are looking at the untapped and the untouched, unreached societies. So even within Greater Accra, we don't really look at uh, where there's an overly concentrated uh, group where everybody we, we, we try to reach the, the, the unreached yes okay. you know so yes we we, 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 we coordinate them it's, 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 but some we we classify them more like outreach posts you know like mission areas sort of because they are not as as, as strong administratively so we try to support them from the center some who are outside some are really strong on their own and for them you can even just make one phone call and everything else. so yes there's a balance and each assembly calls for different approach 2023 will be an exciting year for all horebians around the globe as we commemorate 30 years of the birth of this great commission and the impact made in the lives of millions all over the world as part of the 30th anniversary Tens of thousands of Horebians from all walks of life will converge at the epicenter of grace in Mafia Kriapim, where it all began. Um, we we are forming we are formed a committee. Right. It's in June, 23rd June, okay, yeah, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are looking at uh, visiting the prisons, uh, bringing in, uh, getting food for the poor. Right. And then some villages that lack some social amenities, we go there and then we help them, we support them. So we have a lot to do and we pray that God will give us the funding to do all this. For now, we, we are praying. Yeah. We are praying. So um, 30 years is, is such a, a landmark right. for any institution. And, uh, God being good, COVID is, is almost out of the way now. So yes we can we can kind of have a mass gathering as we church. So uh, we are praying. We we are we are leaving the rest of the Holy Spirit. But already we've started the background work in terms of logistics, in terms of the kind of activities we are looking at. But the actuals uh, we, we, we roll them out by the end of the year. So other other, other institutions like this uh, who would want to support in terms of coverage would also help us. So we would let you know. What, what convinced you to say, my husband, if God has spoken to you, we are in this together? Oh, one thing is, I've learned before even I entered into marriage. If anything, you have to together with your husband. Right. Mm, in church, when we're attending women's uh, fellowship movements, you were telling us that. Uh, when you uh, uh, get into marriage, mm -hmm. you don't decide to quit. But everything you have to trust on God, rely on God, pray, and the God will see you through. Mm -hmm. So, if before we we're enjoying life, things were rosy for us, and now he's in this situation, why should I leave him? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So, it's been 29 long years. When you look back, what's the feeling like? I feel like the, I mean, this, uh, God has really been good to us, right? And we trusted in Him, and God, who has said in His word, that He's faithful. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, never failed us. Never failed us. Mm -hmm. I would say that God has done more than enough. Uh, yes, God has done more than enough. From Palm Branches to where we are now, we see that Jesus is Lord and we praise God and we honor God. First Lady of Mount Horeb, 
Reverend Mrs. Elizabeth Okai has a golden piece of advice for wives of ministers of the gospel and how they can support the ministry of their husbands. Hmm. Uh, what I'll, I'll tell perfect wives that when God calls your husband, it's not your husband alone. Okay. Because the Bible says the two shall be one. So if God calls your husband, he has called you two. Huh. So your husband knows the gift, or God has God in gift. You also have a gift. Find your gift and appraise with your gift. Pray for God for the anointing. Find where you can also make an impact. And also do it. And appraise and make an impact in people's life. Support your husband. Mm. Encourage him. Never leave him alone. Be with him. To do everything, be with him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, thank you so much. I want to advise all the young pastors coming up that God has gifted them. They should just uh, take their time and then work with God and believe in Him. And whatever God has promised them shall come to pass. So they should believe in God and uh, every promise that God has given them will come to pass. But to do other things, I don't think is right. Yes, it will take them to hell. Mm. Yeah. I praise God and I thank God. No weapon. No weapon. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you you very much. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All Horribians are excited about the day and the euphoria is gathering momentum. I cannot wait to see you here in Ghana for the Mammoth celebration. Remember, Mount, Mount Horribian, no, no weapon. weapon.